Big News Morgans is one of the funniest characters of One Piece. What I don't hear people talking about is how hilarious it must have been when he found out who Luffy was and what he was about. So that's what I want to talk about today. We're going to go through that day and follow it all the way up to the best day of Big News Morgans' life when he finally meets Luffy face to face. And we're going to be following this story through the eyes of Big News Morgans himself, so follow me. You are Big News Morgans. You are a journalist in charge of the World Economic Press, a sort of subsidiary to the world government newspaper paper, which means you kind of get to print whatever you want and say whatever you want. But there's an issue. At this current point in the story, you're a little bit depressed because the news is, well, boring. You know, the world events are just boring. And even the most exciting thing that's happening at this point, the Paramount War, is pretty boring to you because you think the Marines are just going to censor whatever they want. You just think, you know, I might as well not even go. So you don't go to the Paramount War. You think no matter what happens, the Marines are going to find a way to make it boring. Marines good, pirates bad. Like, that story has just utterly bored you for so long and you're ready for something sensational. You're ready for something chaotic. You are ready for someone to just be crazy and do crazy things. But those times are not these times. So you skip the Paramount War. So on your way to work, you're scrolling through Twitter and you see some footage of the war at Marineford, like actual footage. And you think, that's weird. The Marines don't normally film the events of a war. I mean, that's pretty crazy. And then you notice the person that's hosting this live stream is a clown. And you think, is that buggy? I know that that's buggy, but didn't wasn't he captured? You start second guessing the information that you thought you already knew. And needless to say, it is just a weird drive to work that morning, okay? As soon as you get there, you get yourself a cup of coffee and you wait in the break room to start your day. And that's when you are flanked by one of your other colleagues. This guy's name is Jimmy, okay? Now, Jimmy's a good guy, but sometimes he can be a pretty lousy photographer. As he's about to explain to you, he has just been let go from the world government newspaper because of how many times he's taken photographs with the lens cap still on. And while he's giving you this whole woe is me spiel, you know he's going to follow that up by asking for for a job and you start already kind of thinking of ways you can let him down easily because you know you like him he is a good guy but to be honest you're trying to run a business you really don't have any room for people that can't remember to take the lens cap off before they take a picture i mean this isn't a charity i'm sorry but before you turn him down he stops you and he starts filling you in on the most bizarre sequence of events that you've ever heard in your entire life jimmy's like i'm telling you morgan's like you are always saying that you are waiting for the next chaotic sensational pirate to come out and just shake up the scene i really think you should have been at Marineford. I really think the guy that you're looking for, like he was there. Okay, so what? So some crazy guy broke into the War of the Best and started trying to fight all of these high-level pirates and Marines. Like it must have been some really old guy with nothing left to live for. And Jimmy's like, no, actually, a very young crackhead broke into the war and just starts fighting people. And he's like, a child broke into the War of the Best and started fighting people. That doesn't sound right. I don't think that that's what happened. And he's like, oh no, sir. Like this, that's the thing about this guy. Like he just loves fighting and he loves loves punching above his skill level. That's like his whole thing. He can't get enough of it. He's just running around trying to fight people all the time. What is he, Russell Crowe? Actually, he's more like Ezra Miller if the entire world was Hawaii. Jesus Christ. Yeah, he's a monster for sure. But the weirdest thing is, you know, I've been following this guy's adventures all the way back since the uh, East Blue. And every place that he goes to, the people end up happier. You know, he goes there. And even though the island ends up completely destroyed, everybody's always crying tears of joy, thanking him for coming. And he just sails off into the sun. I mean, it's a really whimsical experience every time, I have to say. And you're just like, so he's magic? Jimmy's like, it would seem so, sir. It would seem so. Wait, you said that the islands end up destroyed? What are you talking about? What's going on there? And Jimmy's like, well, yeah, that's like their whole thing. You know, they get to a new island, chill out for like five seconds, and then, you know, just immediately start dismantling the establishment board by board. And you're just like, I don't understand. Jimmy's like, I'm saying every time he gets to an island, there is an established ruler or government in charge. Okay. And by the time he leaves, it's gone. Like everybody just has to start over. I mean, just as soon as you see him on your island, consider that a hard reset because he is changing everything he doesn't like. And so you're like, what the, well, why is he doing this? You know, is he a part of the revolutionary army? Is he an anarchist like Blackbeard? Like, well, why is he doing this? What does he want? And Jimmy's like, uh, Wendy's. You're like, I, Wendy's. And he's like, yeah, I asked him that same question the other day. I asked him like, you know, why are you doing this? What do you want? And he's like, yeah, just give me like a double bacon cheeseburger. We'll be good. And so I humored him. I got him the double cheeseburger. He ate it and then immediately started beating up the cop that was giving me a parking ticket. And you're just like, I, 
Okay, so what is what is that? Well, now hang on, I have a theory about that, sir. So you remember when I said the first thing they do when they get to the island is they like chill out for like five seconds? Yeah. Okay, so in that five seconds, they go and they get something to eat. And usually the people that serve them food are a part of the struggling working class, right? And so while this crackhead is eating the food that they have graciously given him, they start unloading their stories about how they're frustrated with either the upper class or the criminal component of their society that the Marines refuse to do something about. And as they're telling this crackhead all of these stories, as soon as the crackhead is done eating, he gets up and just starts destroying the island until the king or crime lord or whoever the crackhead wants to punch uh, just comes out of hiding and so that he can finally beat him up and leave the island. Hang on a second. I need, I need, I need a second. Hang on a second. Jimmy's like, are you all right, sir? And you're just like, yeah, I just, I just... I'm trying to put together everything that you just told me. And Jimmy, it sounds like what you just said is that there is a magical fighting crackhead traveling the world asking people for food. And if you feed him, he will dismantle your local government. Is is that what you are telling me, Jimmy? Yes, that is the gist of it, pretty much. And so you're just like, well, Jimmy, I know why they fired you. You are clearly going insane. That sounds crazy. So he stops you. He's like, well, no, sir, I know how crazy that it sounds, but why don't you look at these documents that I brought, okay? These are all of the photographs and all of the notes that I've taken, and it will prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that these things not only have happened, but there's so many other things that we can only speculate what really happened. So you're still really skeptical, but you humor him. You're like, all right, let me see this. Let's just start from the beginning. All right, so the pirate captain Alveda, her crewmates pulled a barrel out of the ocean, and then a crackhead popped out of the barrel and started whooping everybody's ass. This can't be right. This isn't right. And then he's like, I promise, sir, it only gets way more crazy from there. All right, beat up one warlord, beat up another warlord. Then, he, wait a minute, broke? he broke into Annie's lobby? Isn't that an intelligence agency? Is he a pirate or a terrorist? He's whatever you need him to be. And he declared war on the world government. Why are they not sending an admiral after this guy? I mean, he's literally challenged the entire world to a fight, and he's traveling with the one and only person that can decipher what's on the poneglyphs. Like, he should truly be their biggest priority. I don't understand. So Jimmy's like, well, then you are not going to like what happened after that, about how he broke into Impel Down and then broke a bunch of people out of Impel Down before he went to Marineford. Impel Down. The Guantanamo Bay of One Piece. The one place the government is constantly bragging that no one can ever get out of. You're saying he broke in and then broke out. That's what you're telling me. And then he's like, that's what happened. And then from there, he went straight to Marineford. He's like, I'll get to Marineford in a second. But again, you're telling me he broke in. And then he just broke out in the same day, like lickety split, just like that. That happened for real. And Jimmy's like, that happened. And you're like, okay, how did he do that? So Jimmy's like, you know, we were wondering the same thing, but after looking at Buggy's live stream and like checking out some other evidence, we've discovered that he managed to romance the pirate empress. And so she helped him break into Impel Down. And she also helped him fight people at Marineford. And this bout of information is what just sends you overboard. You're big news, Morgans. You're just like, Jimmy, are you telling me that this crackhead that travels the world found his way to the Amazon island and rizzed out the pirate empress? Jimmy, are you telling me that the baddest woman on the planet, Boa Hancock, fell in love with the crackhead? Is that what you are trying to get me to understand right now, Jimmy? Because I... This, yeah, okay, I have listened to this ridiculous story for as long as I could, but I swear to you, that is the final straw, Jimmy. Get out of my office. I swear to God, I never want to see you again. And Jimmy's like, sir, please just relax. Look at the evidence. I'm telling you, I would never lie about something like this. We really think that's what happened. That is the last straw, Jimmy. I refuse to believe that. Do you know how many hundreds of millions of berries I would pay just to, for Boa Hancock to look at me, much less step on me or do that pointy thing that you did? I would do... I I would give it all for that. And you're telling me this wandering crackhead has rizzed her out? You're telling me this one wandering magical crackhead has managed to romance the baddest woman on the One Piece planet and he then used her to break into the most impenetrable fortress that the world government is constantly bragging about. And then he breaks out the same day to cause trouble in a literal war that's going on. You're telling me all of these things happened underneath my nose and I had nothing to do about it. Well, I tell you what, Jimmy, you're hired. Give me all of those documents. We're going to get to the bottom of this tonight.
So Jimmy's hired, and together the two of you go through all of the evidence that he's been keeping track of over the years of the Straw Hats. And for the first time in a really long time, the spark comes back. You realize this is journalism. Finally, this is what I've been waiting for. This pirate is gonna take us to sensationalism. We need to find him, Jimmy. Like, I, this guy isn't gonna lay low for a while. He's not even gonna lay low for a few days. Like, I promise he's gonna make his move soon. And sure enough, you are correct. A few days after the Paramount War, this crackhead has returned to pose for pictures for his Instagram. You go, oh, he's the goat. He is so, he's so cool. Jimmy, I swear to God, if you don't get pictures of Spider-Man, you are fired. So Jimmy gets out there and Jimmy gets pictures of this crackhead and he manages to put them on the newspaper and you, that holds you off for a while, but you still want to know where he's going, what he's doing. Unfortunately, you're going to have to wait three long years for that because this is during the time skip. But during the time skip, you see, Big News Morgans doesn't just sit around. He is constantly constantly trying to figure out where Luffy is and what he's going to do next. So he realizes to catch a crackhead, you have to be a criminal. So he becomes a criminal emperor, like a true underworld boss. He starts getting knowledge and learning things about things that he just does has no reason to know. And so for three years, you are working on your criminal resume. You are getting close to Big Mom, members of the worst generation. You have access to so much knowledge that you just have no reason knowing. And you're just sitting on it because all of it is just lip service to what you really want. And that is figuring out where this magical crackhead is left to and when he will return again. So it's the new world and you are about to attend Big Mom's Tea Party. Now, you have heard whispers of Mugiwara no Luffy's return. So you know he's back. But the reason you're here at this wedding is because you know he's going to be at this wedding. And do you know why? Because Big Mom has their cook. Big Mom has the straw hats cook and she is holding him for ransom. She thinks this is going to go the way she thinks it is. And you know something that she doesn't. And that is how Big of a crackhead that Luffy is. So you get there, it's you, it's Jimmy, and it's Stussy. Now Stussy is kind of out of the loop. She understands that this is important, but she doesn't know why you and Jimmy are so excited. So you start telling Stussy about like all the different stuff that Luffy's done and why you're so excited. And she's listening to all this and she's like, I just don't understand. Like, is he a pirate or a terrorist? And you're just like, he is whatever you need him to be, Stussy. Like I'm telling you. So the wedding starts and you are just giddy. Like you cannot wait. You don't know what's going to happen, but you have a feeling it's going to happen here. And all of a sudden, and you see Katakuri freaking out in the corner. You're looking at him. You make eye contact with him, and you're like, he's coming. And then suddenly out of nowhere, this crackhead jumps out of the wedding cake and then a hundred more of them jump out of the wedding cake and they all just start beating up everybody. You go, now this is news. Get him, crackhead. And so he starts fighting everybody and then Katakuri and Big Mom get kind of upset. Katakuri's like, Beige, you're supposed to be wedding security. Get him. And Beige turns around and he's like, actually... I think I'll kill Big Mom. And you're like, so Capone Gang Beige is teamed up with the crackhead to assassinate Big Mom. Oh, this is big news. This is big news. So you start getting fired up. You're telling Jimmy to take every photograph that he can. Chaos is happening all around. So the crackhead leaves the wedding. He runs off. Katakuri goes after him. Okay, Big Mom goes after him too. They get into a fight and they kind of beat up as many people as they can. Like all the straw hats kind of taking a beating and you start getting a little bit distressed. You're like, no, this crackhead is the future. He's got to get away. Maybe he can't beat them yet, but he, he's, he's not going to stay down. I know he won't, but we need like a miracle like this crackhead has got to get away so while you're thinking that and while you're praying um the present that the crackhead brought to the wedding slowly starts to fall off of the ledge that it was on and when it hits the ground it explodes this crackhead brought explosives to the wedding so the bomb goes off and at once everybody just screamed like i mean seriously is he a pirate or a terrorist and in the confusion all of the straw hats managed to get away katakuri goes after him and you see that luffy takes katakuri into the mirror world now you lose sight of everybody for a long time until finally just the fighting's over but the island is just on fire like everything is destroyed you think you know i don't really know what happened but I know that he won. I just I just need to verify it, though. So you start trying to talk to survivors. The first person you find, Katakuri. And so you find Katakuri, and he's just there laying on his back. And to your knowledge, this is the first time that you've ever seen him lay on his back. You don't comment on it. You just want to know what he has to say about Straw Hat Luffy. Katakuri looks you dead in your eyes and goes, I do not want to talk about that lunatic. I don't. I never want to see him again, okay? And so you're just like, come on, Kat, don't be like that. I just need a little bit of information. I mean, Big Mom's definitely going to go after him anyway. I mean, what are you going to do? Just stay here? And Katakuri's just like, yeah, I, I swear I'll just sit my ass right here. I, I don't care what happens from this point on. I will never see that man in a 1v1 
ever again. And so you accept that because the only thing that you really took from that is the fact that no matter what really happened in the mirror world, Luffy won. For sure, Luffy won and Katakuri lost. So you leave, you start trying to talk to other people, and you really just kind of get the same census. The crackhead showed up, chilled out for like five seconds, and then afterwards immediately started fighting everybody until the entire place was on fire. And you go, you know what? I've seen enough. I have seen enough. Jimmy, get all of those pictures ready. We are going to write this article. You boldly and brazenly declare that Luffy won his altercation with the Big Mom Pirates and that he's going off to Wano. And you boldly declare him the fifth emperor of the sea because you know that's going to piss everybody else off. And you know that it's going to make Big Mom and Kaido feel like they have to compete with this crackhead. And you're really trying to bait him. And so what ends up happening is it works. Big Mom and Kaido team up and that begins the saga of Wano. And so though the story of Big News Morgans does not end there, we're going to call it for this video. Please let me know if you guys like this so that we can keep this series going, see what Big News Morgans is up to, because he's got relevance in the manga right now. Like there are things that we could fully go on and spoil for anime onlys, but we're not going to. Um, but if the series continues and more people get caught up, at least until after Wano, I think that will be when the next, like the part two of the story can resume. And then when we get wrapped up in Egghead and everything like that, we can keep going. I just, I really see potential for this series. And this was really fun to do because I really feel like that's how Big News Morgan's day went. Like I truly feel like that's exactly what happened. And yeah, I love talking about it. But once again, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for being interested. Let me know if you like this. Let me know what other content you might want to see. I'm listening to all of you and I appreciate all of you so very much. Um, thank you, 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 thank you. And I can't wait to see you next time.